Google Chrome is a web browser, which means it allows you to access the internet and run web-based applications. Even for the internet, it's pretty shocking. Although it is very simple, I would be willing to bet there are things you can do with Google Chrome as a teacher that you had no idea about. So in today's video, I'm gonna share my 10 best Google Chrome hacks for teachers. number one is creating bookmarks with just the icons. I get asked about this all the time in my videos, sometimes under my bookmark bar, you may have seen that mine are all just these images and I have them in rainbow order. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So in order to add a bookmark, you're first gonna navigate to the website. So for example, pocketfullprimary.com. From here, I'm gonna come to bookmarks and select bookmark this tab. A little dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna automatically generate a name based on the settings of that website. But if you want just the icon, you're gonna delete that text and under folder, make sure bookmarks bar is selected if that's where you want it to go. Click done. It's gonna automatically place it at the end of your list using that favicon, favicon? Still haven't decided how it's actually said. It's the little icon that's associated with a website. From there, you can click and drag in order to reorder it. I have mine in rainbow order just because it is aesthetically pleasing. So I can click and drag. We'll put this over here with the red ones. Beautiful. Now, if you're wondering, what does this do? Not a whole lot besides make sure bookmarks look pretty. It's just aesthetically pleasing. But from a utility standpoint, you could argue that you can fit more bookmarks this way because you don't have the added text from the titles. So if you have a lot of bookmarks, this might be a good option for you. If you just want it to look prettier in rainbow order, this is how you do it. Or if you don't want your students to see the name associated with the website when you're using a browser, maybe projecting it up on your screen, this is a great workaround. Hack number two is pinning tabs. I'm gonna show you how to do it and then we'll talk about when this would be useful. There are a few different ways you can pin a tab. First, you can just right click on the tab and then select pin, it's about halfway down. You will notice it once again removes the name of that website, so it kind of shortens the tab, but it also will move it all the way to the left. So if you have multiple tabs open, it's gonna push it all the way over. You can then unpin it by right clicking and choosing unpin. Another way to do this with that tab selected, come up to a tab, select pin tab, and then once again to unpin it, come back to tab, and you're just gonna uncheck where it says pin tab. Unfortunately, at least at this time, there are no keyboard shortcuts for pinning tabs, so you do have to do it one of those two ways. But why would this be useful? Why would you need to do this? First of all, if you are someone like me that tends to randomly close out of tabs and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to close that out. First of all, there are ways to get them back and I will show you how to do that in a second. But this kind of eliminates your availability to do that because when I have the full tab, you'll notice I have that little X, the one that I accidentally click all the time. But if I pin the tab, I no longer have that X. I also have the availability to fit more tabs. So this is a great way if you are that person that has a million tabs open and it gets overwhelming, this will allow you to fit more and maybe navigate them a little bit easier. Once again, you don't have the title, but you can always hover over it and it will tell you what that website is. So I recommend pinning tabs that you are using most often. The great thing is even after you close Chrome, when you reopen it, those tabs will still be pinned. So if there are certain websites like your email or Google Drive that you have open all the time, you can pin them. That way you don't have to accidentally worry about closing them. It will move them over to the side and they will just kind of you know, hang out nice and cozy in the left corner. Hack number three is grouping tabs, which is basically like sticking them in a little folder together. It's just a way to keep things organized. In order to create a group, you're going to right click on the tab and then you're gonna select add tab to new group. Another way to do it with that tab selected is to come up to a tab and then select group tab. It's just two different ways to do the same thing. But from here, you're gonna give it 
a title. So for example, I might say daily tabs. I can select a color. So let's do this nice blue color. And from here, I can either add a new tab into the group. That's gonna open up just a blank tab and I could then navigate to the next website. But if I already have a website open and I want to add it to that group, I can click and drag until it gets that outline color and it is now in that group. And you'll notice as soon as I click away, that group is formed. I can always come up and edit it by right clicking on that group. I can always change the title or have no title at all. If I delete all the text, it's just gonna show a colored circle. I also could add like an emoji or something like that. And at any time I can always come in and manipulate those settings. I do really like the move group to new window feature. So if I click this, you will notice I no longer have that pinned tab because I have taken that whole group and just moved it to its own window. If I want to remove a tab from the group, I'm gonna select the tab I wanna remove, right click and choose remove from group. Notice it does not delete that tab. All it did was moved it out of the group. So this blank tab that I had open is no longer part of the group I created. What I really like about this group feature is you can easily condense and expand the tabs. So if I click on that blue dot, which represents my group, it will condense them all. And then I can click again to expand them all. So it's almost a way to like show and hide your tabs. As a teacher, if you teach multiple subjects or multiple groups of students, you might have separate tabs open for each different class you're teaching. And this is a really great way to have them all open at the beginning of the day. And then you can just show and hide them as you use them throughout the day or as you no longer need them. So at the end of the day, if I'm done with this group or maybe before lunchtime, I'm done with this group, I can right click and choose close group. It's gonna close all of those tabs. Now it does not save my group. So once I close it, they are gone. But again, I'm gonna show you some ways you can always get tabs back. So really quick, just to go through those settings again, if I right click, I can add a new tab by selecting here, or I can click and drag a tab into the group. Ungroup is just going to remove that group. It's like taking papers out of a folder. You still have the papers, but they're no longer organized together. Pam, put that in my good idea folder. Close group is going to close all the tab. That's like taking the folder with the papers and throwing it into the trash. And then move group to new window is like taking them from one file drawer to the other. I'm really happy that that analogy came together. <laughs> So the main function of the group tabs is just an organizational system. It can help you know which tabs you're using for different parts of your day. It can allow you to expand or condense them as needed, but it's also a way to kind of hide the tabs from students because you can keep it condensed and then they don't know what tabs are there. So if you are someone that teaches multiple subjects or teaches multiple groups of students, this is a great way to kind of set up your browser at the beginning of the day, have everything ready to go, and then you can just use them as you need them. Now to go along with that, hack number four is setting startup pages. These are the pages or the tabs that will automatically open when you create a new Google Chrome window. So if you have certain tabs that you're opening day after day, you can have them open automatically. In order to set those tabs, you're gonna come to Chrome, Preferences. On the left-hand side, you're gonna select on Startup. From here, you have a few different options. You can have it open the new tab page or have it continue with where you left off. If those options sound appealing for you, go for it. But personally, I like to have it open a set of pages. So I'm gonna select the last option, open a specific page or set of pages. From here, I can either individually add the tabs that I want to open or have it use my current pages. I'm gonna select that option. Right now it has like my main website, Google Drive, and then maybe the slides that I'm using to teach. That sounds good. So I'm gonna close out of this Google Chrome window and I'm gonna open up a new Google Chrome and you will notice that those pages automatically open. So essentially this saves you time from having to open the same tabs again and again. I recommend taking time brainstorming what do you always have open or open throughout the day and go ahead and put those into your settings. That way it will save you time later on. 
Hack number five, I've been teasing it this whole time, reopening closed tabs. This is a great hack if you are someone that randomly closes out tabs or your browser randomly quits and you're like, wait, I had a website open and I don't remember how to get there this is for you. Once again, with Google Chrome, there are several different ways that you can do it. The first is just to right click at the top and choose reopen closed tab. That is gonna open the last tab that you had opened. But I can repeat that process and it will continue opening like the previous tabs, like it just keeps moving back in time. So if I repeat that same process, reopen closed tab, now it has that pin tab that I closed out of, I can do it again, reopen closed tab, and it has that settings page that I had opened. Another way to do it is using this arrow in the top right. From here, you're actually gonna see a list of the tabs you currently have open, as well as recently closed. So I mentioned if you close a group and you're like, wait, I meant to ungroup, not close the group. It's okay, you can always click that arrow, scroll down and you can see here is that blue group I created. I can click and it will reformat that group. It'll be right back in my Chrome where I left it. You also can use keyboard shortcuts. So on a Mac, you can hold down Command Shift T and it will reopen that last closed tab or on a PC, you can use Control Shift T in order to reopen it. So this functions basically like your undo button, but for tabs and windows that you've closed out. So don't panic if you ever accidentally close a tab or a window, you can always go back and be able to reopen it. Hack number six is customizing your Chrome. And there's a few ways that you can do this. I'm gonna open up a new tab and in the bottom right corner, there is this little button that says customize Chrome. Chrome. You may not have noticed it before. It's just hanging out down there. Once you click on this, you can customize the page by either uploading an image of your own or selecting from the options that they have available. I leave mine on classic Chrome because that's how I am, but feel free to get fancy with this. On the left, you also have some different options. The shortcuts option is going to allow you to have clickable links to websites that you either frequently visit or that you have programmed in there. So you can almost use this as like a separate section of bookmarks, if you will, or if you wanted just to show your most recent sites, that can be really helpful as well. Cards, I'll be honest, I haven't quite figured out the cards because mine don't show up and maybe it's because of other settings that I have, but feel free to play around with that. And then color and theme, of course, you can choose from their different options or customize it on your own. I just have the black on black option. So this is really just a way to kind of fancy up your Google Chrome, customize it and personalize it to you. Hack number seven is the side panel. This gives you easy access to your bookmarks, your reading list and searches. So in order to access the side panel, I want you to come up to where your profile is and go right next to it. It looks like a box with half of it shaded in. It says show side panel. If you click that, it will show the side panel and you can click it again in order to hide it. From here, you will notice that I have a drop down, and I can select between reading list, bookmarks and journeys. You also can adjust the width. So if you want it to take up more of the screen or less of the screen, but at minimum it has to take up the bow like a quarter of the screen. You can't shrink it down any more than that, but you can always hide it by closing it out. So within the reading list, this is a way to add tabs to that you maybe want to come back to later. It's kind of similar to bookmarks, but once you add a tab, so for example, if I add this tab, you then can mark it as red. And it's just a way to keep track of like maybe websites that you want to go back and browse. And it's just another way to keep track of them besides just bookmarking them. Speaking of bookmarks, you also can navigate to those here as well along with your journeys, which is just gonna show you almost like your search history. And if you ever did a search and found a website and closed out of it a while ago, you can kind of search back through there in order to find it. I do wanna show you another way you can use this side panel within the search function. So if you are in Google and you have done a search and you've clicked on the first website, so let's say I've clicked on Khan Academy and I'm like looking through, but I wanna be able to easily navigate back and see the other websites. With that side panel open, if I click the drop down, I now have a Google option and it's gonna bring back that Google search that I had. And from here, I can select some of the other websites. So I could come down here to school yourself and it's just going to replace that browser. So it's a faster way rather than going back and having to then navigate to the next site, you can do it right in the side panel. Hack number eight is to search highlighted text. 
If I'm on a website and I am wondering what a word means or I see a phrase and I'm like, oh, I need to Google that. You can actually just click and drag in order to highlight the text. So for example, first class teaching, I can then right click and I can choose search Google for first class teaching or whatever text it is that you have highlighted. It's gonna open up a new tab with a Google search using that phrase. Now this works with single words as well. And with single words, a lot of times the first Google result will be just a definition. So it is a really easy way to define words, especially if you're reading them with students, but you would wanna make sure you have certain browser security things in place if you're just kind of opening a new tab with a Google search of it. But especially on your own, if you're reading a PD article and you're wondering about a word, that's a really quick way to get a definition. Hack number nine is tiling the screen. So I think the pandemic, if anything good came out of it, we all learned how to use like a split screen on our computers because we had no choice, but tiling the screen within Google Chrome is a faster way rather than trying to resize things. So for example, I can click and drag this tab out to make a separate window and then I can click and I can use my arrows to like move that one over and then I can move that one, but it gets messy, right? And when you then wanna bring them back to the full screen, you have to remaneuver them again and it's a lot. So instead, you can actually come to window and you can choose tile window to the left of the screen or the right of the screen. So I'm gonna put this one on the left. It's gonna automatically place it there and it's gonna show me the other windows I have open that are available to tile the right side of the screen. So I could select Google Drive and it now has created a very nice split screen. I even have this toggle in the middle where I can make one side larger than the other and adjust it. It's just a much faster way if you are using a split screen in order to navigate that. So this is perfect for things like answering emails when you need to get information from other places, planning lessons if you're looking at a curriculum document and maybe you have your slides open. I highly recommend tiling your screen and then being able to navigate the pages much faster. Hack number 10 is Google profile syncing. I really hope this is one that everyone knows, but just in case you don't, if you're accessing your Google account, let's say on a school computer as well as home, if you sync your accounts, it will allow for all of your data to transfer. So you'll have the same bookmarks, you can open the same tabs that you had, and it just keeps everything nice and cohesive. So in order to do that, you first wanna make sure that you are logged in to the Chrome browser. So you will see your profile up here in the top right. It will have your image. If for some reason you don't, if you click there, you can always add and you can log in from there. You also have the guest option, but if you have a Google account, I highly recommend logging into it. Now you will notice with mine, it already tells me my sync is on, but if yours is not, you're gonna come to the three dots, select settings down at the bottom. And from here, you can choose Sync and Google Services, and then you will have the option to turn it on, and you also can manage what is synced and get all of the settings the way that you want them using everything down below. But again, if you are accessing your Google account from multiple devices, I highly recommend syncing it so that all of your bookmarks are there and you can even save passwords. I know it may depend on your district and their security settings, but it's at least something to look into. That is it. Those are my 10 best Google Chrome hacks for teachers. Life hacking, baby. If you're interested in more, I also have videos with 10 Google Slides hacks for teachers, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Calendar. All of those videos will be linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.